Hello there, my name is Mr. Smartonkey. Welcome to another episode of Weapons of the Wasteland. So once again, thank you all very much for your suggestions and feedback on the previous episode. So it seems the combat rifle was extremely popular, so I'll be covering that in this episode, but also in the next one, because there is a tremendous amount of receivers for this gun. So I figured I'd split it up into two episodes, just make a whole bunch of guns, essentially. And I'll be covering gun not rank, well, uh, unranked and gun not rank 1 and 2 in this video, and I'll be covering gun not rank 3 and 4 in the next one. So as always, I'll start off by showing you guys the scopes and the sights. So I'll only be showing you the sights and scopes for gun nut rank, uh, well, one and two, basically. I'm not gonna be showing you the ones uh, that require rank three and four because I'll be covering those in, in the next episode, basically, where I show you the higher level combat rifles. So first of all, the standard sights, um, which I actually quite like. Then we have uh, a front ring, basically, like a front little sight, which makes it sort of look like a regular rifle, like a, a real life rifle. We have the uh, glow uh, version, which is always, is just a uh, three extra green dots on the end. Uh, we have the reflex side dot, we have the reflex side circle of pretty standard stuff. And then we have the short scope. I won't actually be using the scope in this episode, but I figured I'd show you guys anyway. Uh, so of course there's higher or medium and, and long ranges for this as well, but I'll be covering those in the next episode. So as always, we'll be finding out how the regular rifle does in combat before we start operating it. So, this rifle is very strong. It's it's one of my favorite rifles in the game currently. One of my favorite weapons in the game currently. Just because it's so strong. It's very reliable. It just does a lot of damage. It doesn't fire too quickly, but it has a very large magazine, so you don't have to reload too often. Anyway, base damage of 33, which is, again, fairly significant. Fire rate 33, same number. Pretty good. Not, like, amazing, but it's it's good enough. It's a fairly fast-firing gun. It's actually somewhat hard to control sometimes, uh, even even though it fires relatively slowly, so sometimes you have to just slow yourself down as well. Uh, range 119 standard, which is also pretty significant. I mean, it's a good number. Uh, 70 accuracy, also quite high, but the recoil on this gun is, is fairly big. Uh, it really does benefit from having the uh, recoil compensating things that we'll be covering in the next episode because we actually can't get them right now. Of course the fats are still in here. Second shot is a crit, the rest are just regular hits. Uh, it, it does do a fairly significant amount of damage, but it can't quite manage to take out the supermoon just yet. So now that you've seen the short combat rifle in action, it's time to perform the first upgrades as per usual, of course. So. Um, as I've already explained, this this gun is going to be a little bit different than the usual episodes. I'll be doing two episodes on it just because there's so many different uh, things you can go for. Uh, mostly receivers, that is the thing. But also the fact that a lot of the upgrades are level 3 gun nut requirement or have a rank 3 gun nut requirement. Um, so it's hard to do it all in one episode, basically. So anyway... Let's start. So these first three guns, I mean, two of them are going to be pretty damn similar. Uh, one of them is going to be somewhat different, but anyway, we'll, we'll get to that. So the, the first uh, thing we're going to operate is the receiver, of course. So we're going to go to a hardened receiver. Uh, these, this just has, like, the all, all the standard things. That is a light frame receiver, uh, which now I know, by the way, actually, like, the light actually has its bonuses. It allows you to fire more often, and that um, also means your scope comes up a little quicker, things like that. Um, but I'm still not really convinced with it. I'm, I'm not I'm not a big fan anyway uh, Heavy frame receiver does the opposite and the calibrated receiver is the critical shot damage Of course, but we're gonna go for the hardened receiver just plain upgrade and damage. I like it um, The automatic receiver is already gone not rank one you can see here by the way how many damn options there are It's crazy. So that's why I'm, I'm gonna make two episodes on this uh, For the barrel we're gonna go for a long barrel So this gives a superior range inside of accuracy better recoil and poor hip fire accuracy Not really a gun you want to be hip firing all that much anyway, but not necessarily you don't it's not like you don't want to use it for hip firing at all. It's a very good all-round gun, in my opinion. It's one of my favorite guns currently in the game. Um, because just it's so reliable, it does so much damage. It can use be used at short range, medium range, and even long range on the later upgrades. So it really is just an overall really good gun. Um, the short light barrel improved hip fire accuracy, but I'm just going to go for the long barrel. And you can see here, by the way, these all three of these require rank three of gun nuts. And the same goes for the stock. We'll not be upgrading the stock at all during this episode because it all requires gun nut rank three. Magazine, uh, we are also not going to be upgrading because it requires rank 2 for the first one, rank 3 and rank 4. And the muzzle, we are... actually, hold on, the sights, sorry. We're going to be upgrading the sights to a reflex sight circle. Once again, this is just my personal preference. Please feel free to either go for front ring, uh, sight ring, which is something new, which I, I, of course, I've already shown you earlier in the video. Uh, the glow sights, the reflex sights, um, or the short scope for this level. But yeah, short scope, we'll be using scopes later when we actually get to our, sort of the sniper rifle version of this gun. Uh, this actually turns the combat rifle into a sniper rifle as well. 
combat sniper rifle, which I think is pretty interesting. Uh, but we're not going to be uh, using any of that, and then of course all this other stuff makes it into sniper rifle as well. But I'm not going to be making this into a regular rifle and sniper rifle video like I did with a hunting rifle. I'm just going to make it into a two episode thing just because there's so many freaking receivers. And some of them will be combat sniper rifles, some of them will just be regular snipers, uh, regular rifles. And the muzzle, we're not going to be doing anything uh, because uh, I don't want to put this on. I will put this on one of the other ones actually. Uh, you'll see why when we get to that point. Any compensators also require gun at rank 3, suppressor gun at rank 4. This is a very like difficult gun to upgrade basically when it comes to like, well, later levels basically. You need to get all the better upgrades. But anyway. That is the Tactical Hardened Combat Rifle. So let's see how the Tactical Hardened Combat Rifle does in action. Another headshot uh, to start off with, just like usual, and it does kill in one shot, just like the unupgraded version did as well. So there's not too many upgrades made to this gun. Uh, damage 41 is a significant upgrade from 33 to 41, eight damage extra. Fire rate's still the same. Range has gone up a significant amount though because of the long barrel, so up to 203 right now. Accuracy gone up a lot as well, 81. And you can definitely see it already helps quite a bit. Just having the sight on there as well. This super moon goes down super quick. Uh, just having the sight on there helps a lot. Because the standard sight, as much as I like it, it's actually f fairly difficult to um, to keep track of because of the, the amount of recoil on this gun. You can see we do a l significantly more damage to the super moon already in fast as well. So now we've seen the tactical hardened combat rifle in action. It's time to do the next upgrade. So this gun is going to be completely different than the last one. We're going to go for the armor piercing automatic receiver. The requirements for this uh, this particular gun will be gun at rank 2. Uh, so we will be able to do a few more upgrades over the last one basically. Uh, so yeah, we're going to go for gun at rank 2. Um, and the reason because that it, I skipped gun at rank 1 is because this just makes an automatic receiver. This is exactly the same thing except he does armor piercing as well. And there's nothing else that unlocks that gun at rank 1. So we may as well just skip that and just go straight for gun at rank 2. So we're going to go for that. The automatic piercing, automatic, sorry, armor piercing automatic receiver. So armor piercing and automatic, um, which is pretty interesting. We're going to go for the short light barrel of this one, the improved hip fire accuracy. Because this is going to be more of a close range gun rather than a uh, long range with the long barrel. Um, and you'll see why, because it, it's sort of like an SMG kind of thing. Well, not really an SMG, it's more like a, it's, it's an assault rifle, if you will, but, um, yeah, so I, I prefer to having slightly closer range, basically. Otherwise, because this gun has a massive kickback until you can get to uh, these upgrades, which we can't do right now. It has a massive kickback, so, um, yeah, that's why. Magazine, I will actually be going uh, for a... Uh, large magazine because it's it, if it is going to be an assault rifle you want to be able to fire as long as possible without having to reload um, For the sights we're gonna go for a reflex sight circle again personal preference feel free to go for anything else And the muzzle we're gonna go for a large bayonet because we can't go for the compensator or muzzle brakes These things are actually really important for this type of gun You'll see that this gun is very very hard to control because of the massive recoil uh, But when we get to the next episode, we'll be doing uh, automatic guns or this this gun in an automatic version, but with like the compensator or muzzle brake or things like that, and it'll it'll be much easier to control and it'll be a lot better. But we're gonna go for the large bayonet because it, it is sort of a short range weapon, so it makes sense to have a bayonet on there to be able to stab those enemies. So anyway, that is the tactical armor piercing automatic combat rifle. So it's time to see the tactical armor piercing automatic combat rifle in action. Now this is a completely different gun. This is the uh, the one off in this episode. Basically, we'll be covering more automatic rifles in the next episode as well when I do the rest of the combat rifle upgrades. Um, but yeah, this is a completely different gun than the other ones. It's automatic. The recoil is absolutely insane on this gun, which I have said before. Uh, so it, it is fairly difficult to control it in uh, like when you're firing automatically. Look at this. It's it's very hard to keep track of where the enemy is. Um, but it does do a surprisingly good amount of damage. Um, we'll see in VATS as well if you compare it to the other ones. If you can... Um, uh, keep your aim on the enemy like if you don't miss a single shot this does the most damage in the short amount the shortest amount of time as I mean it makes sense because it's a, an automatic weapon of course but you can see there the critical uh, hit there did a significant amount of damage and we actually managed to take care of the super mutants the only gun in this series that actually does so that was the tactical armor piercing automatic combat rifle it's quite the mouthful we're gonna be doing the final upgrades for this episode of course we'll be doing four more guns in the next episode so for the receiver, we're going to go to a powerful receiver, just another plain damage upgrade, basically. Uh, the only other upgrades we have here on Gun Rank 2 is the hair trigger receiver, and of course the one we already had. Hair trigger receiver, not that bad necessarily, but the fire rate, I'd rather like, you may as well just go full auto in that case, basically. Hair trigger makes it a little faster, but 
Um, the damage with the powerful receiver is just so much better that, yeah, I, be I much prefer that, basically. So we're going to go for that. Barrel, we're once again go for the once again going to go for the long barrel. Same reason as the first upgrade we made. The stock, we still can't upgrade. The magazine, we're going to go for a, a large magazine. Oh, by the way, the requirements again for this gun are gun up rank 2. We'll be going into gun up rank 3 and gun up rank 4 in the next episode, basically. Uh, the sights, we're going to go for another reflex sight circle. Personal preference, feel free to change it if you want. And the muzzle, we're not going to have anything. I'm not going to go for the bayonet on this one because I want to have the range, um, the max range of this rifle. Because it's going to be more of a, a long range rifle. Um, and the bayonet decreases the range too much that it's just not worth it to me. But if you want to put that on there, feel free to do so. So yeah, fairly easy to make upgrades here. Uh, I mean, fairly easily going through them because it's all very similar. Uh, but once we get to gun at rank three, we'll be able to actually get all the, uh, the stocks and uh, the barrels here as well. So it'll be uh, become a lot more interesting. But anyway, that is the tactical powerful combat rifle. So the last but not least, the tactical powerful combat rifle. So this one is fairly similar to the first one we've done. It just does a whole lot more damage and it also has a large magazine. Um, but that base damage that it does extra is, is very significant. We've gone up from 33 to 49 now. Fire rate's still the same. I actually didn't even go over the stats in the last one, but whatever. Uh, 203 range, which is still the same as previous as well. And accuracy is still 81. So yeah, it hasn't changed much except for damage. Uh, but dam damage is a good thing, of course. I mean, I do like doing damage too. The enemies we uh, can't quite take care of the super mutant in vats though uh, even though the previous gun actually managed to do that so have a quick look at the comparison it's going to be a very quick one actually because they all take care of the enemy extremely fast uh, the automatic rifle is just slightly faster than anything else but remember this is hitting every single shot at a close distance so when you're at further range the other guns will definitely do better than the automatic rifle Thank you all once again for watching another episode of Weapons of the Wasteland. I hope you guys enjoyed. So next time I will be covering the combat rifle again, but please feel free to leave suggestions anyway for what you'd like to see me use after that. 